Hi everyone! Welcome to my Archie Notes. For this content, isashare ko sa inyo yung tatlong bagay na dapat malaman nyo bago kayo mag-take ng board exam. I'm talking about the architectural licensure exam. So, para to sa mga aspiring architects na mag-take ng ALE. First thing to know, dapat alam mo yung qualifications. So, paano mo nga ba malalaman kung qualified ka to take the board exam? Una, you must be a Filipino citizen or citizen ka ng foreign country. Basta ang mahalaga, citizen ka sa isang state bilang patunay na hindi ka alien. Pangalawa, dapat meron kang good moral character. Self-explanatory naman na siguro yun, na dapat may profession ka man o wala, eh isa kang mabuting tao. Pangatlo, syempre, dapat holder ka ng degree of BS in architecture. And hindi ka lang dapat graduate ng architecture. Dapat dumaan ka rin sa tinatawag nating diversified training experience which is equivalent for at least 2 years. Basta mamit mo lang yung required hours which is 3,840 hours Mamit mo yun or sumabra ka pa doon, okay lang. Basta wag lang magkulang. Ngayon, kung pagka-graduate mo, kumuha ka ng master's degree in architecture, equivalent naman yun in two one-year practical experience. So, sa mga hindi po nakakaalam, after po kasi namin graduate ng architecture, kailangan namin mag-undergo sa diversified training program na kung saan meron kaming mentor na architect din, tapos dadaanan namin yung iba't ibang field of practices ng isang architect. Tapos yung meron kaming logbook na nandoon yung certain hours na dapat namin kumpletuhin, yun yung nabanggit ko kanina na 3,840 hours. So pag nakompleto yun, ipapapirma namin sa mentor namin, and isa yun sa requirements na dapat namin isubmit para makapag-take kami ng board exam. And last thing, para ma-qualify ka to take the board exam, dapat wala kang kahit na anong criminal record. So after mong malaman kung qualified ka to take the board exam, next thing to know is the documents. Ano nga ba yung mga documents na dapat mong kunin and dapat mong submit in order for you to take the exam? First document na kailangan is your certificate of live birth. And if you are a married female, kailangan mo ng marriage certificate. Next is your college diploma together with your transcript of record. And make sure na yung transcript of record nyo ay may naka-indicate na for board exam purposes only. So may mga indications kasi yun yung iba for work purposes, may mga ganun. So make sure na kapag nag-request kayo sa, sa registrar nyo, sabihin nyo na for board exam purpose yung transcript of record na nire-request ninyo. So para makaiwas tayo sa delay, dapat ahead of time na ilakad nyo na tong college diploma and transcript of record nyo. Kasi kapag nag-request ka, hindi naman nila to agad binibigay. May certain working days pa siya bago mo siya makuha. So kung magre-request ka the day before ka mag-submit ng mga documents, hindi mo siya agad makukuha, makukuha and hindi ka kaagad makakapag-file. So dapat ahead of time nakaready na yung diploma and transcript of record mo. Okay, next yung ating DT Form 001 and DT Form 002. Yung DT Form 001, ito yung first page ng logbook natin na kung saan nandoon yung field of practice na kailangan natin gawin, nandoon yung total number of hours na na-render mo during your apprenticeship. So nandoon yung signature mo as trainee, yung signature ng dean mo, yung ayapawa number, ayapawa number niya, the school na pinanggalingan mo, and etc. Tapos, yung DT form 002 naman, ito naman yung the following pages ng logbook mo. Na kung saan nandun yung project na hinandel mo, anong field of practice ang ginawa mo doon, yung period covered, kung gano'n mo siya katagal ginawa, and nandun din yung signature ng mentor mo na pinag-apprentisan mo. And next is your mentor's affidavit. Ito yung nasa last part ng logbook natin, na kung saan nandun yung pangalan ng mentor, nandoon yung patunay na ikaw ay nag-apprentice sa kanya at ito yung pinapanotarize natin sa lawyer. And make sure na itong last part na to, naka-sign and sealed yung mentor mo and yung lawyer na pinagpanotarizan mo. Next is the PIC or yung Professional Identification Card, Tax Receipt, and Ayapoa Number ng mentor mo. And lastly is your NBI Clearance. And make sure na itong NBI mo is updated para hindi ka na rin magkaproblema. And lahat ng documents na to, isasubmit mo siya in photocopy naman. So, sa'yo pa rin yung original copy. So, para makasiguro, mag-alot ka na rin ng extra copy for it para hindi ka na pabalik-balik pag nagsasubmit ka na ng documents. And other requirements. Make sure na updated ka sa mga requirements, additional requirements na nire-require ng PRC or ng Board of Architecture for you to take the board exam. Make a checklist and kompletuhin mo yung documents para walang maging problema. So, after mong ma-qualify, after mong makuha lahat ng documents sa kailangan mo, Next thing to know is the subjects and the passing rate. Yung tip ko dito, alamin nyo sa mga recent board passers kung ano yung mga subject na nauna, ano yung mga subject na magkakasama, ano yung schedule. Yun kasi magiging parameters mo kung ano-ano yung mga subjects na dapat magkakasama mong nire-review para magkaroon ka rin ng sarili mong time frame kung ano ba yung dapat mong unahin, kung ano yung kasunod, and kung ano yung ihuhuli mong subject. So, nung time namin, 2 days ang exam. Yung first day ng exam namin, nahati siya sa dalawang part. Yung first part, which is AM, 100 items siya. Sama-sama doon yung history, urban planning, and professional practice. Yung second part naman, PM, sama-sama naman doon yung utilities, building tech, structural, 150 items yun. Tapos yung second day namin, na 200 items, nandoon naman yung design and site planning. Pure design and site planning yun. 
So from that schedule, magkakaroon ka na ng idea para sa sarili mong time frame. Pagpalagay natin na 6 months kang mag-review, pwede mong gawin na yung first 2 months mo, sama-sama mong i-review yung history, urban planning, and professional practice. Magkaroon ka ng goal na matapos mo itong subject na to. And then, the next 2 months, tapusin mo naman yung utilities, building tech, and structural. Tapos, pwede yung last 2 months mo, doon mo ilaan pagpapractice mo sa pagsusolve ng mga design problems. So, in line with the subjects, napaka-importante, alam mo rin yung passing rate. Ang passing rate kasi natin as of now is dapat meron kang 70% na general average. And sa tatlong set ng exam, hindi dapat bumababa sa 50% ang score mo. So, during your review, isang factor to para mag-gauge mo yung sarili mo kung ready ka na ba talaga for board exam. For example, may mga questionnaire kang sinasagutan. Kung kata questionnaire, namimit mo yung 50% at hindi ka bumababa doon, malaki na yung chance mo para pumasa. Pero, i-aim mo dapat na sa bawat subjects or sa bawat questionnaire na sinasagutan mo, i-aim mo na higher than 70% ang nakukuha mo para safe na safe. So, itong percentage ng passing rate na to, hindi ko lang siya naging um, parameters during my review. Naging parameter ko rin siya during exam day. First day, part 1, which is 100 points, binibilang ko na yung mga sure kong sagot, tapos pag pumapasok siya sa 50%, medyo nakakampante na ako. And through that kasi magiging at ka, lalo na kapag alam mo na lumampas naman sa 50% yung tamang sagot na alam mo. So yun lang, remember the acronym QDS. Ito yung three points na dapat nyo i-consider before taking the board exam. The qualifications, documents, and subjects. Thank you for watching. Kung nandito ka para matuto, salamat at napili mo tong video ko. At kung nandito ka naman just to judge the content creator, sana masaya ka!